We're using the same colors we used last week, ultramarine blue with yellow in it to make a green. And I go ahead and leave a dark pile of that dark green, add a little more yellow to it to get uh, that more of an olive green. And then remember, the only other color you have to affect this pile of green, you can make it lighter and lighter and lighter, but it's, it's still a bluish green until you add more yellow. So there will be areas in it that we add more red to it to get it uh, to be more of an olive, uh, brown or green. But I just pull out the value piles to have about four or five distinct values from simply ultramarine blue and yellow. A little speck of red in it. I'm making another little pile on the outside with just ultramarine blue and yellow so that I have a little brighter blue-green area. Then I made a pile of orange with yellow and red and put a speck of ultramarine blue in it to give me that nice color of the ground. You can pull that down with yellow light to make a lighter version of it. And then you can also have a little area with just that yellow ochre color and white, and then you can pull that raw sienna color out with some white in it to see what you get with that as well. See where you might pop a little bit of light. Now the third mixture, I'm making um, another green, and I'm going to add red to it to go towards a brown for the tree trunks. I added more blue to darken that brown pile, and if it starts to get too blue, I just add a little bit more yellow in it and just tweak it, hold it up to the painting, tweak it again, hold it up to the painting. You notice I'm adding more blue to it to get it darker. The yellow is definitely not going to darken it, so the only option I have is, is the blue. I've pulled a little bit out from that pile to make a kind of a gray lavender color. And then add a little bit of blue to make a lighter blue tone for those trees in the distance. My yellow is really acting as my white here, so I've used a lot of yellow. I'm going to make a, another green mixture and put red with it to make another pile of brown. And you notice you can tweak your brown to be bluish, uh, greenish, warm, orangish. So it just depends on the color you're going for. If you want to keep it dark, you just have to keep mixing more of the dark colors in with it. So I mixed up the same color palette that we used last week with the greens and the raw sienna, burnt sienna tone for the ground and some dark browns for the trees. I used, I started with ultramarine blue and a little bit of cad yellow and then added red to tone it down so it wasn't so chromatic. I have put medium on the canvas or in this case the this is Stillman Burn archival sketchbook. I put a light coat of the Galkid Gam Saw Walnut Oil mixture that I mix up myself. It's kind of shiny, so it's giving me a little bit of reflection as far as the video goes, but it, it brings the sunken in areas of the painting back up so they're not so flat, and it's closer to the accurate paint color. It also gives me a smoother surface uh, a little bit more like painting wet into wet. I'm going to be using the same brushes, uh, Filbert's number four, uh, maybe a few number two Filbert's. <clears throat> I'll be using some brushes to soften with later on in the process. And this time I'm going to go ahead and start with my darkest darks. And I've mixed up the dark green and a dark brown 
that could probably go a little bit darker than I have them. And uh, I'd like to start with what's farthest back. Uh, since I have the green area covered, I'll go back in and add some texture. But I want to go ahead and start with this darkest tree in the background and try to get that um, laid in first. And then move my way toward the front. I'm, I'm moving to maybe a number three. And I always swish my brushes in a little bit of mineral spirits uh, because I do use some lanolin based hand cleaner in my brushes to moisturize those with so I don't want to have that in my paint. So I'm starting with this dark green mixture. Um, really, really, this is the darkest thing on the painting. And I want to go ahead and establish that. Sometimes in the beginning, I'll establish the darkest dark and the lightest light early on. And then I can gauge all my other colors against these two. Even if I just put in an area um, of these, just so I can see how dark they're eventually going to go. And if my paint feels a little bit stiff, I'll add a tiny bit of medium here on these darks because I want those to go in rather smooth. Just anywhere I see these really dark darks, I want to go ahead and put a note for those right now. <clears throat> and it doesn't hurt to use a little bit smaller brush for this because this is a small painting. There are... Um, you always want to look at the size of your, your canvas in relation to the brushes you're using. I've always been taught to use as large a brush as you can possibly get away with. And that keeps you from working so hard. And it also keeps you looser. Keeps you from getting into too much detail too quick. Working back into dry paint has always been a challenge for me. It's almost like you have to get this whole thing wet again before you can start really making any progress. But um, I see a really dark one here. And I can go back in and put that later. But I do want to just have a pretty good note of where all my darks are here. Let's see how far I can take that. <clears throat> And then I think I'll come back in after I get some of this leaf work done for these smaller branches. But this gives me a good place to start. There's quite a bit of dark on this side of the tree, but it's not as dark as down here. A few little splotches of that maybe, a few places. These are beech trees, it says in the description. So their bark is pretty distinctive, and it helps to learn your trees. If you're going to be a landscape painter and that's your primary um, venue of painting, that's your primary um, love and passion, then you should know your trees. That's pretty important. There we go. And you see with the darks, each successive layer will add will darken it just a little bit more. That's why we have to go back in on a painting usually several times to get all the, the darks dark enough and the lights light enough. So I'm going to lay these brown brushes down and I'm going to move to some of the greens, the dark to medium greens first. Um, kind of working from the top down. If I pick up a green and it feels too bright and chromatic, then I'm going to mix a little of its complement in with it to dull it just a little. So with this dark green, I'm mixing a little tiny bit of red in it just to dull it down. So see that second stroke is a little duller and darker. So as with any creative endeavor, there are always obstacles and my Hard drive was full on my phone, so I had to stop and dump that off. I did uh, a few things uh, after the phone ran out of room. I put a few darks in. Basically, uh, 
using little X marks and wiggles to just kind of wiggle those in. The main thing you want to be really careful and guard against is just making all the same strokes on your canvas. A lot of times you'll see a um, an artist who's used maybe a fan brush and all their strokes are exactly the same and in the same direction and it's just nature is just not like that. It's very uh, unique and varied and it's almost better to twist your brush um, as you're laying those in and just get lots of just different wiggly interesting marks. Sometimes those branches will be kind of predictable and they'll have a certain rhythm to them. So the more you know about trees really the better. I am using the same brush for my darks and I'm moving to a different brush when I'm when I switch into uh, medium tones. And just sitting way back from the uh, canvas so that I'm using uh, the end of my brush and I'm not choked up on it with a pencil grip. This just gives me a more painterly loose style as I lay these strokes in. So I started with the dark green, I moved to a middle tone green. And having laid in just some little spots of these darkest darks. I've used about five brushes so far. I am going to pick up another filbert to lay in the next layer of uh, some lights. I'm going to go ahead and pop my lightest lights in here. And um, using the lightest green I have mixed on my palette. Let's see how that registers. It's pretty close to the right value. However, it is a little too green. This has more yellow in it. And I'm going to see how that goes. I may adjust that as we go. I'll put a little bit of white in it. Let's see. Ooh, let's see. That's too much. But that's my lightest light. So I want to go ahead and kind of put a little note. Again, if the color seems too chromatic to you, put a tiny speck of the complement in it, which is red. And that will just dull it down a little bit. That's what I'm going to do now. Just to keep that from being so bright green. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to go ahead and get that in so that I can work on this tree and not have to come in around the tree too much. I want to get that bright glowy light in there. Where else do I see it? Let's see. Some in here. Um, some between these two trees. Really nice and bright right there. Especially bright right there. Along this bottom is pretty bright a lot of places. And when I'm when I'm painting uh, any kind of brush or foliage or trees, I want to have a lot of vertical strokes because everything grows up. Now, when you're getting into the bushes and all that goes on between the bushes, then you can definitely vary your marks and your strokes. But for the most part, you want to keep things that are growing out of the ground vertical, and leaves you can kind of what I call wiggle in. So now I have my lightest light and my darkest dark and I have those established. I started putting in some of the uh, ground with the raw sienna color. I laid all these strokes in horizontally right now and took note of where colors were darker and I'm adding a little bit of the brown over here. Keep your corners dark. You don't want to lead your viewer out of the painting with light or complex forms over here in the corners. It's dark green up there. Where else do I see it dark? A little bit dark right in here. And along this root system here is dark. Kind of a mixture of greens and browns. And I want to keep that brush for my, for my darks. 
or for my uh, burnt sienna colors. All right, the next thing I want to work on is, uh, I think I'll work on the background a little bit more, and I think I'll put these uh, lavender colored trees in. They are pretty distinct. Um, they're, they're soft, though, in color. And I mixed up a little bit uh, on the palette of this lavender color. It's not very bright and chromatic. In fact, it reads kind of gray as I lay it on the canvas next to that green. So I'm going to put just a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of blue back in it to give myself more of a lavender color. And when I'm mixing lavender, I ask myself, is it bluish lavender or is it reddish lavender, violet? Um, and this feels pretty cool and blue. And that has um, so much red in it that it's really dulling it down. Let's see if I can get a little bit cleaner color here. With just blue and red. When you put all three colors in there, you're gonna you're gonna gray it down. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit more, a little brighter than what I see in the original painting. Let's see. Eh, maybe. I'll go ahead and put that in and maybe we can pump it up a little bit more as we as I work into it. I see some really nice light tones over here. Sky maybe peeking through. And then I'm just kind of moving around asking myself, do I see it anywhere else? I see more there, but it's got a little bit more blue in it. A couple of places. There we go, some blue. I'm just gonna grab a little bit off the ultramarine blue there. I kind of like that. Maybe a little bit up here in a few spots, a tiny bit here. Now I left some ultramarine blue and yellow mix over here on the side so that I can kind of use a little bit of that blue green color in a few places. Feels like I see some of that up here. And that just cleans it up a little bit, gives it a, a little different tone. Yeah, let me go back to the lavender here, which kind of shows up through all these trees. Maybe a little there. Do I see any on the ground? No, I don't think so. On the left side of this tree is a darker note, and I have to ask myself, is it brownish? And it is. Is it purplish, or is it cool or warm? Um, it feels a little of both to me. So let's look at it a little closer. Right along in here. And maybe it's warmer at the bottom and cooler as it goes up. That would make sense. A little bit more grayer and cooler as it goes up. And don't worry if, you, if you're using a big brush and you don't get these shapes right. It's okay. You have plenty of time to fix those. Well, I got that color on my brush. Let's see if I see it anywhere else. There, and see how zooming in, you can really see more of what's going on with the individual little pieces of color that he's used. I'm going back to my blue-green color because I see a little bit of that pretty color that I mixed over here on the far right of my palette with just ultramarine and yellow. I see that right in here a little. It's pretty. Uh, maybe some down here. I'm not worried about getting the brush strokes and all this foliage in exactly right right now. I want to get what's behind the trees so that I can lay the trees back over on top. And 
I don't have this tree wide enough, but I can fix that. A little bit of that blue-green color. More of the blue-green is over on this right side of the canvas. I'm going to put a few of those tones in here. Now I can already see the thing you're going to want to take care of is after you get all this brushwork in that you don't just go back in and mush it all together. You want to leave some individual strokes. Okay, so there's some texture. Let's start again with those brushes that, I mean those uh, uh, trees that are farthest away and I want to add a little bit of texture on those. Um, and kind of carve them down then I want to blur them a little bit because I don't want them to get too too sharp I don't want them to jump forward too much so I'm going to keep my strokes kind of all up and down just go in here and put a little bit of texture on that maybe it's a just a dead tree in the back and there's some warmth to it that I don't have so I'm dipping into my raw sienna color put a little bit of warmth in there just a tiny bit in a few places. And it's close to the same value as the background, so it's really not standing out much. I'm gonna put a few more little light notes in it. Whoops, that's too light. And I'll go and check this in a few minutes and see how my values are doing um, because it's real easy to lose yourself in the values. And I've gotten kind of out of whack with the top of that tree. Remember when we discuss trees that they always get smaller as they go up. So be on your guard for that. Don't let things get larger as they go forward. All right, now while I have this smaller brush in my hand, I want to come in here and put a few dark notes, not too dark. I'll lay this uh, horizon line down a bit. I'm going to grab a little bit of brown and work on this tree. And it's brown and um, it's kind of an orangish brown. So while you're working on the tree, ask yourself, is it a warm or a cool brown? How dark is it? And keep your, you can see that I put my first strokes in this way. A lot of these I can put in horizontally now and kind of wrap them around the trunk a little more. Can make this tree a little wider. These print, these marks are going to be horizontal. Just make them small. Don't get too big with any of your brush strokes. Keep them small and vary them so that you don't have any samey samey anywhere. Again, nature is very random, and you don't see things lined up perfectly. You know if you see a line of trees somewhere that somebody's planted them that way. Unless they're on a fence row, and if there's a fence, it meant somebody, that was a man-made thing, and then the birds sat on the fence and dropped their seeds, and things didn't get mowed there. So... But otherwise, trees grow in a very random way. So I'm going into this burnt sienna color. I mixed the orange with a little blue in it to kind of brighten my brown in a couple of places. I don't have that quite dark enough. Uh, I do see these dark strokes going this way. Let me get a little bit of the dark. And you see how how that really helps start starts to form the cylinder of what is the tree trunk. <clears throat> so that really brings that tree trunk into the foreground more. All right, this one again, I don't think I have it quite dark enough. It could be even darker. And this one is darker up here at the top. And of course, once we start adding those side branches, it's going to make a big difference. But we want to make sure we get the base, the trunks, uh, 
correct. Make sure we get those all drawn in before we start adding any limbs. I always think about what came first. That just always makes more sense to me to paint that way. What came first? Now this tree is much darker. It has a lot of green tones in it. So you want I always keep a paper towel in my hand. So I am cleaning my brush off and I'm using this small filbert long uh, long filbert. I just like the the touch it has and I'm going to get some of a yellowish light to pop in between these trees right here. Um, it's really there's really some nice light poking through those trees. And I want to put that in before I work on these trunks anymore. Um, and I have to be careful because I like that so much. I want to put it somewhere else. And I'm not sure that I really see. I may be a tiny bit down here of a yellowish tone, but it's not quite that light. So you're always thinking not only of the color, but what is the value? Is that there's, is there anything else that's that light? And this is pretty close. It's kind of glowy around the bottoms of these trees. It kind of makes the trees stand out a little better. Um, maybe some yellow, yellowish tones over here, but they're up on the value scale. So while I have that yellow on my brush, I can come back in here and and remember, your, um, your yellow ochre color is um, a bit of an orange. It's yellow with a little bit of red. And then it also has some purple in it to neutralize it. I'll put a little bit of that yellow in there. And then there's some stronger down here, up and down. It seems to me if you use... Um, up and down and horizontal strokes the most. Um, it's just more painterly and it's more realistic when you get really now of course these branches are going to be angled that way but for the most part when you're painting up and down and back and forth is your best way to go. It just works better. Now while I have that on my brush, let's see, put some more of that yellow. I see a darker version of it up here. I don't know whether that's space or actually tree trunk there, but I'm going to put a little bit of that in there because it's warm. So you're constantly asking yourself, is that a warm tone? Is that a cool tone? Is it light? Is it medium? Is it dark? And I'm looking for my brushes here. I'm going back to the dark brown. And I want to work on this trunk a little bit more to get the darks in there. And I do know that I do not have it quite wide enough. So I'm going to make it a tiny bit wider. Being careful not to make it wider at the top than it is at the bottom. All right, let's see. I'm using a little bit of medium on these darks because I want my, my paint to flow. And see how if you've already put that light behind there, it just lays on a lot better. Now this needs to come around in front of that tree. And then all these strokes are going to be horizontal. There, that's better. I still like the green-gray color. So I'm getting my brown. I'm going to mix a little green in it for over here. And I've got too straight of a line right here, so I want to zigzag that. And it's, it's kind of challenging because this brush is so big. So maybe I'll switch back to my long filbert. Get me a little bit of dark. Get me a little bit of dark um, paint on it. And again, I don't want these strokes to be too similar. Like these are all too lined up. So let me break those a bit. Let 
This one's very straight, and I know that, let's see, about, let's see, halfway up that tree is where that this big branch goes. So about here is where that big branch goes. And I'm going to get a little bit more medium out because when you make these small branches, you want to be able to, uh, you want the paint to flow. All right, so I'll put a little medium out. And usually, um, I'm going to work on this one. I'm usually better if I pull up for a branch and then over. Break them into segments because if you do one long continuous one, they don't look as realistic. All right, and these... Some of these are kind of continuous, so just make sure you are angular with these little branches. And they don't have to be exact. There's going to be some variety here. It would be nice if you could still see some of my drawing lines, but... That's okay. And then I can soften these and blur them down if they get too busy. So this big tree up here has several big strokes, branches coming from it. There's one here. This kind of goes over straight. I've made it a little too, going upward too much, but that's okay. I can fix it. And then this one is one of my favorite branches here. Remember, they get smaller and smaller as they go out. So this is where you can kind of goof your trees up if you get these branches too wonky. And we're going to go back in and put some leaves back over them as well, but it is important to make these look realistic as much as possible. And then we've got these trees here in the background that are not as dark. And I'm putting them in pretty dark right now, so let me move to a lighter shade of brown. It's got a little burnt sienna in it and some medium so that it's thin. And then while I have this, this lighter, thinner color on, I'm going to come over here and work on the roots a little bit because what's above is also below. So we know that the canopy of a tree, usually the root system is as large on most trees or goes deep. If it's really, really tall, the root system goes deep, like on oaks, certain kinds of trees. And these just sort of disappear in with the, with the ground. So you don't want any real hard edges. It's going to be easy to go back in there and put some plant material in front of them as well. I really like these little crevices down here where little fairies live. Or mouse holes. Don't get too straight with them, they're knobby. And you'll probably have to re-dip because you lose your darks. Once you've got other colors here, you lose your darks. All right, so those trees are definitely standing out. Now they're going to have to just be toned down a bit. I don't have any branches on this side. These are more greenish. So I'm going to mix a little green in with my brown, and they are brown, so let me get two green with them. And they are angled downwards. So before I did much more work on the leaves, I wanted to make sure we got these branches in, because the branch came before the leaf. 
one peeking through there. Quite a few of them here. Broken, broken lines. Don't make long, continuous weeping willow lines. <clears throat> also knowing that we can take a soft brush and soften these in to where they're not so emphatic. Or they're not standing out quite so much. See, that one's too straight. You can tell, and it's a continuation of that one. Although, it is kind of like that, so maybe I can make the leaves um, kind of camouflage that a little bit. Some stuff going on up here. This is a nice one here that starts at the front of the tree. So we learned that from Alfonso Dunn. I loved his demonstration of those branches that are in the front. It gets smaller as it goes out. It can be broken. This one has a little branch on it. And you can use a little tiny um, rigger brush for these branches if you want to. I'm just using the side of this long filbert, but a rigger brush may be easier for you to control. And riggers are long. Let's see, I'll hold that against the dark so you can see it. Um, and you can load the brush and pull it out. Let me try a few of them with this and see how it works on these little small ones especially. So you've got some little, little tiny brush back here. These make a really nice little small line. And then maybe some of these smaller branches coming off here. And I twist, I get some medium and I twist this brush to get it to load up. Easier for me to pull in this way with this brush. So we've got some smaller branches over here. I don't know about that. I think I messed that up. This looks like a vine on the side of this tree. A grapevine. And that's what they do. All right, let me get out of this one because I will start trying to paint with it if I'm not careful. I try to keep all my brushes that I've used in a pile. That way I know which ones need cleaning and which ones are are uh, unused. I don't end up washing them all. Now let me skip back for a minute and see. It's, boy, it's pretty busy with those branches. So let me put a little bit more texture in. I'm going to add some more texture down here. There's not a lot of rest area. It's pretty, um, it's pretty busy. So let's get, I'm going to scoop up with my brush some greens and come in here and lay them in kind of heavy because uh, these look kind of gobby to me in a lot of places. Up and down, up and down like grass and moss. Especially back here, there's a lot of it. So up and down, back and forth. Up and down, back and forth. Again, the long filbert's working really nice. It has a lot of bounce to it. Now there's some greenery in front of this tree which kind of softens and that's what happens with trees. A lot of little stuff will spring up at the base. I'm forever cutting that down around my trees. So I'm going to stick some of that back behind there. There's some little branches right in here that kind of break some of that up. Grabbing a little bit of green. I'm going to come over here and add some greenery around these branches to kind of work them in before I start any softening. 
If I've made the branches strong enough, they won't totally get lost in all this foliage. Um, tweaking. And you know, I'm having that feeling again, is it going to work? Am I going to be able to pull this off or is it going to be a big green and brown mess? And I'm also trying to decide if we're going to work on this a third time. Um, I like to say yes. I like to give myself a chance to come back in because I feel like just trying to hurry up and get done is not a good habit. Uh, if you find yourself piddling too much and you're too slow, well then yes, maybe you need to push yourself a little bit to get on with it. But always trying to paint fast and see how quickly you can get done is, it's just, I mean, you're supposed to be enjoying this process. And you want to not give up uh, and just leave it if it's kind of like, eh, it's okay. And you're just kind of okay with it. Well, then don't just be okay with it. Keep working until you love it, until you can step back in these woods and go, oh, feel like I want to go sit down under that tree. I feel like it's a place I've been before. I want to go there. Don't settle. Keep pushing yourself. And again, I don't want to see any sharp ends on these branches. They sort of disappear. This one feels like it's jumping out a little much. And these are standing out. So be careful now that I've got this light green on my brush. I don't want to come back in here, but I do have um, some other dark areas down here in the ground that are not represented yet. Now that's not looking good at all, but it is darker. It's more of a burnt sienna color. Get some of that in. There we go. Some of it up here. And remember it's orange with a little speck of blue in it. I don't have these right yet. So it's just continuing to develop the painting. until you feel like you're getting close. Again, these colors are not exactly right, but I do think I'll stop here in a minute and take a picture and look at my photograph uh, because these things are, I'm too close to it. Getting back from it now. I can already tell some of my values are off. It's looking a little muddy. I don't want any light way down here to draw your eye down to the bottom of the canvas. I want to keep all this dark. Same here. See how that pushes you back up here. Same over here. No lights down here. The lights need to be in this area. Even over here, I could darken up some more. I'm using the same brush. But I want to put some, some branches that are going to keep the eye in the middle segment. Yeah, that feels better. Um... I haven't done much in the way of these branches. And we can piddle around and we can come back in here 
and put uh, put the, the wood branch back in after we piddle around with these leaves some more. So don't worry too much about that. A little bit more movement in here than I have. And then there's some darker green down in here and dark brown, which again, that points you back over this way. This is broken up a little. And there's some really pretty green branches in the front here. If I can get those to register. So what makes things so interesting is the overlap and see how this overlaps. I'm not sure I have it exactly right, but there's some overlap in a couple of places and that looks nice. There's some branches here. Kind of breaks the top a little. I think so far this long filbert's one of my favorites. So let me work on this just a bit here and flatten these strokes out because they're standing out like a sore thumb. And imagine you're wrapping your strokes around the trunk of that tree. Want to knock that off a tiny bit. Knock my edges down. There, that feels better. And anything that's too straight or rigid looking, this is, it needs to be broken somewhere here. Let's see. Maybe here. Put a little bit of this light on it. What did I say? Here, maybe. There we go. Okay. I want to go back in with my really light green and put some more texture in here. Because um, I don't really have enough texture, and there's a lot of texture right in here. It's that um, Frank Baggett thing, I forget what he calls it, where he just kind of bounces the color on there. And that's fun. You have to be careful you don't get too carried away with that because it can get really busy. But it's kind of what you see. You go even one degree lighter. And that is that yellow, that is that green on my palette, and I've added a little bit of white to it. Not much, be careful. Don't, it, it, actually, I'm, I'm probably going a little bit too light. So I'm gonna have to come back in there and darken that up. There's a bit of that glowing through in a few places up here. That's too blue right there, so let's drag a little bit of green through it. And see how I'm holding it so that I can see my ring and I'm just letting the brush kind of fall on the canvas. There's a little bit of that right here next to the trunk. Really pretty.
All right, I'm going to take a break. Okay, I went across the room, washed my hands, and looked at it from a distance, and it looks pretty good from a distance. I'm really surprised. I always am, because when I'm sitting here on top of it, I do not like it. Uh, I wanted to show you, I've got two softening brushes, um, a little cheapo watercolor, which has kind of got some dried paint in it, so I'll find another one similar, and my mongoose brush. And I want to just, um, before I stop, I want to just soften a few things in that are standing out too much. And that was standing out too much. And again, I'm going to go up and down and back and forth. Up and down and back and forth. Just kind of work some things in. And you don't really see the bottom of that tree. So I can correct that. I'm going to stop today because I feel like there are some things, if I get away from this, that I can do that will improve it. I'm wiping it on a paper towel. I'm wiping these uh, blending brushes on a paper towel so that I don't get them to, um, I don't move the color around too much. These are standing out too much. And these are back in the woods. There's just an indication of some uh, trunks that are kind of showing through and I'll go in and put a little bit more texture over the top of those but the nice thing is if I let this dry um, I can come back in and play again next time and not lose this base I could try to put a lot more texture in if I don't like it I can wipe it off so that's the beauty of having patience you know, if you're really an impatient painter, have two or three paintings going on at a time. And that way, you don't mind to get up and leave this one and come back to it. I think one of the things that I do often and on a regular basis is I paint too long. I don't get away from it. And I, I regret it. Um, and that... You know, I've been told to take pictures along the way so that I can see my progress and go back to where I was. But sometimes I just get going so much that I never stop. And I lose some really nice stages that I could have stopped. Um, and then I don't even know what they were because I just kept painting and painting and painting. So let me encourage you that if we stop today, we'll get back to it. And there's lessons in that and just having patience to wait and not be so in a hurry to be done. Everybody, especially my younger students, they're like, can I be done with this? And they're very, very hard pressed to work on something more than once or twice. So, I mean, there's a place for that. I think I'm going to stop.